All right, now that we're recording this meeting, um, welcome to our minor source emissions inventory training. This is our last training for this year. Next week, it's right before Christmas, and then we're right on to New Year's and the start of the reporting se session. As I said, as many of you are entering the meeting, please keep yourself muted throughout the meeting unless you are asking a question. The, um, you can mute yourself by using the microphone button up in the top right corner. If it has a slash through it, that means you are currently muted. Um, if you have any questions, I'm gonna ask that you type them either in the chat function, which is a little um, caption box in the top right corner or the middle of your screen, as someone else already has, or raise your hand, which is a little hand icon right next to that caption box. Um, once you've raised your hand, we'll go ahead and we'll pause at a convenient point and ask you to unmute yourself and ask your question. With that, I think we've covered all of the basics and I'm going to introduce our emissions inventory specialists, Rosalind Higgin and Sean Leister. Rosalind, go ahead and take it away. Thanks, Angela, for the introduction. Um, so the first question I see here is where can we find sessions that were previously recorded? And I'm sorry to say that we didn't record them um i wish we had this so we're definitely recording this one today and we're hoping to cover everything that we possibly can touch on everything um so i want to ask a question how many of you here are interested in xml bulk upload or just xml you can use the raise your hand function Okay, we have our XML experts. Okay, six, five. Okay, so that's um, a good amount. We have about 19 people here. All right, and how many of you are from construction? Like have a GCP and you're interested in that, learning more about GCPs, general construction. Nobody. So all of you are pretty much oil and gas somewhere with NOIs. OK. OK, so we're going to start at the beginning. So um, listen to me carefully. We're going to start with the Air Quality Bureau page, web page. And I'm going to show you how to easily navigate to the page that holds all the information for this emissions inventory. You can. Um, click on inventory where the um, the little hand is pointing. And that will take you directly to the emissions inventory page. This has a lot of good information, but this is not really where you want to go. But this is a good place to review information. The first line where it says submitting inf emission inventory to New Mexico here is information about submitting your emission inventory to New Mexico. Click on that hyperlink. And this is the page where you want to be for 2020. Emission inventory submittal. And let's scan over it. So it has information about, information about emission inventory submittal methods. Now, if you're interested in XML, you can see this is where you find the emission inventory XML tools. The latest version is September 16, 2020, and we have a short video. Um, it provides some general information, but it's not it's not going to be super instructive for you. The next section is how to access air. Now, the first thing you really need to do if you haven't done yet is to um, access air and review your facilities. And um, Let's go on down and then we'll come back to that. Let's scroll down a little bit further and look at instructions to complete your emission 
inventory, the guidance document, we just created a new one. Is this, Eric, is this the latest one up that we just did today? Um, yeah, that was oh, yeah. uploaded within the last half hour. Okay, excellent. Um, so if you have the December 9th version, you may want the December 16th version as it includes a couple of uh, changes. Also, if you are interested in creating a new submittal, there is um, an eight minute video. It's a YouTube video to like us. It's Sean and I, and you can subscribe. And you, you will receive notices when we do more videos, which we're going to be doing videos on certification process probably, and a couple of other things that you will need. Um, and there is another video underneath it, which is how to manually uh, add equipment to an NOI in AIR or even a GCP. So that walks you through step by step how to do it. Then underneath that is the documents related to construction industries. That'll be helpful for any construction people. The next section is the live training. This is the last one, as Angela said, for the year. And we will have them again beginning in January. And they will cover information that we're going to cover today. We'll continue covering it if we have more questions and more if we have any problems or if you have questions about it. And also Calcatinate, which is the calculation tool that we'll be using um, that will be available to you and also the certification process, which is not ready at this time. And I will send out a link and it will also be posted on this page, probably either by the end of the year or early next year, I'm thinking early next year. So be sure to tag this page. The next piece of information is about SCCs, which if you're adding equipment, you're going to need. Also, NAICS codes. This is a quick two minute video about the changes in NAICS code from 2017 dealing with oil and gas and also mining. OK, so let's go back up to accessing air. We want to open up this document. And this is really important because there's three rules you can ask for. I'm not going to go over this document. I just really want to go over the user roles. So when you um, are SEP approved and you become um, approved in AIR, you are asked whether you want to be a facility administrator, a certifier, or a preparer or submitter. So the facility administrator is the role that approves and disapproves certifiers and preparers. So once you once there is a facility administrator in your company, and we we approve the facility administrator, then that facility administrator can approve or disapprove certifiers and preparers in your company. So you no longer need to request that through us. You need to request that through the facility, your facility administ administrator. And be sure to check on the users for your company because there's a lot of people who apparently um, our facility administrators, but no longer work for the company. So that's very important. Um, we ask that the certifier is, uh, we don't ask, this is really important, that the certifiers are the owner, operator, the responsible official or company official of the company, not a consultant, because this is a legal document. Once it's certified, it's going to become copy of record and it for legal purposes. Okay, is there any questions about that? I hope that's clear. It's very important that you understand what role you're choosing and why. Okay, let's move on to the guidance document. So 
even though it says uh, guidance for creating a submittal and manually adding equipment, and we're going to probably modify that title. It's containing a lot more information now as it's growing. There's more questions. Uh, table of contents, they're all hyperlinks. The appendices A and B are very important if you're doing XML. Um, what we've added today, we did a revisions page. It's the last one. What we changed from the December 9th was the greenhouse gas information and also reporting inactive facilities. So let's go over this and then we're going to focus in on um, reporting inactive facilities. So some basic introduction information, introductory information about notice of intents and GCPs, you can add equipment there. And uh, removing ex existing equipment is not allowed. If you want to do that, you can use the support for request. Uh, I'm sorry, request support. Um, let's go on down. Uh, criteria pollutants are required. Okay, actual pollutants versus permitted and potential emission rate and potential to emit. It's very important that you understand that actual emissions are the emissions that are, are pollutants that are emitted into the atmosphere from the emission sources at the facility. And it's based on a calculation method. And we'll go over quickly the preferred ones. Um, permitted emissions or allowable emissions in, a, in your permit are not accepted values, as well as potential to emit and um, potential emission rates do not use those in your calculations as they are not part of any calculation. So let's talk about excess emissions. Excess emissions, even though you do not have to submit them to AQBCR for NOIs, they do need to be included in the emissions inventory because what our goal is here, our mission is here, is to capture all of the actual emissions that are being emitted into the atmosphere. There is no r removing that from the list. There is no subtracting out excess emissions or malfunctions or startup shutdown and maintenance func uh, activities. So all excess emissions and emissions related to malfunctions and SSM events must be reported in the inventory because they are actual and they must be reported um, according to the piece of equipment from which they came. So if you had an excess emission event um, or a malfunction from an engine, then that added to the engine, don't make a separate line item, please. You can refer to Appendix A for the use of um, uh, unit categories and unit types. So let's talk about fugitives. So fugitives are emissions are those that um, do not usually pass through, that do not pass through stack. So, um, there's some more information here about plant fugitives and then fugitives from haul roads and loading and unloading. And this is fairly self-explanatory. If you have any questions, then uh, definitely ask us. So every new, newly added subject item, which is also a piece of equipment and air, it requires the inclusion of a stack. Even if no stack exists, then you can just put down um, a fugitive. You'll see that option, and Sean will point it out also. Oh, we have a question. Is this required when we are per permitted for a separate um, SSM or excess emission or malfunction emission and have reported them as a group in the past example? all compressor blow downs as one value. If that pops up as a line item, 
We still ask that you add that information to the piece of equipment to which it applies. If it is a plant event, then it should be added as a plant event, which would be one SI. Um, so, okay, let's move on down. Okay, so Albuquerque uh, AQB's calculation tool, Calcatenate, is being developed, and we will have uh, some classes on that probably early January. It's based on AP42. That's what the emission factor will default to, but you can also enter specific emission factors. Um, methods of calculation, we have broken this down into tiers. It's important that these are used. Uh, tier one is the most pr preferred. As you can see, it is actual information, actual data collected. Tier two process simulator refers to HISIS um, or uh, Aspen HISIS or Promax. Um, and then tier three and tier four, you can see uh, how this um goes okay let's go down further some descriptions oh calculation spreadsheet requirements we have a list of options that we prefer to see in your spreadsheets portables we have a question yes we have yes. a follow-up question oh do you want to go ahead and read it? Is okay. Is that okay? Since reporting that value would potentially show up, show an average of a permitted emission rate for that equipment since they are permitted for different values. I think it would, right, Sean? I'm sorry. What's the question? Um, oh, you probably can't see them. Yeah, I'm, I can't. Laura, do you want to unmute yourself and let's talk? Sure. Can you, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, awesome. Uh, yes. So we have our permits are set up to have, you know, the emissions expected from, say, a turbine and then we have a separate MSS or malfunction process unit for the EI that includes the summation of all the slowdowns or starter gas emissions from all those turbines in one line item. And if we separate those out and then go add the emissions back to the turbine itself, um, we could potentially go over whatever the you know permitted VOC limit is for that turbine alone since they were permitted in two separate boxes. Oh, that understood. Yeah. That's acceptable. Um, yes, do it that way, separate it by equipment. And under that piece of equipment in air, there's a comment box and just write out what you've done. What that sentence you just gave me, okay. how this, this value includes SSMs and uh, excess emissions and malfunctions. Okay. We just we have it modeled to to add in the counts of all the, you know, how many blowdowns were performed at the site that month, and we calculate the emissions of that since they're all the si the same size turbine, uh, for instance, at a site, and so we would need to get the field to tell us exactly which compressor blew down. Um, and then figure out how to split that up when that wasn't required because in our permit, we're only required to uh, monitor the total emissions that were blown down, not per unit. So that's why it's gonna be extra work to go find exactly which unit blew down and how to break up those emissions. I mean, it can be done. It will just be a lot more work since that's different than how we were permitted and how we were set up to 
monitor these emissions for years. Sure. Understood. Um, yes, the way permitting conducts business is not exactly the same way that emissions inventory does. So, um, that it's necessary for modeling purposes. Okay, so let's move on to portables. And portables are kind of a thorn. Um, the company that all that holds the permit or the NOI is responsible for reporting the actual remit emissions for all line items, all pieces of equipment. But um, if the owning company and the company that's leasing the equipment, the facility that's leasing the equipment, can make an agreement and the lease and the leasing company um, or the facility that's leasing the the equipment can will agree to report the emissions and that's fine but please add that this is a this is leased equipment under comments use the comment box so we understand what's happening this would eliminate our phone calls to you if we don't understand why something's happening. Um, so once again, the company that, all, that holds the permit is responsible for ensuring that the actual emissions for all equipment within their permit or notice of intent is reported in the inventory. But if they make an agreement with the company that's leasing the equipment and the company will take that responsibility for reporting leased equipment, then um, that's absolutely fine with us. Just let us know in the in the comment box. OK, let's go down reporting and active facilities. This question's come up since it sounds like there are several companies out there who have applied for an NOI and the um, permit is active. They were given an approved a permit and it is in our database, but they have either not run the uh, facility for the year 2020 for whatever reason, or the facility was never built. That's what this section is covering. So it's going to be interesting. This is part that um, Sean is going to go over because we realize that if you are an NOI and none of your equipment is listed and you have not ran, then how are you going to submit? So we're going to go over those basics. So here's some information. And as you scroll down, we also have um, what it looks like this is what it looks like that first snapshot if with no existing equipment but it's active but from this we can't tell whether it ran or not it's telling us that there is an active permit in our database okay so sean will go over the details of that i'm not going to do that he's much better at it and you need to update your permit. We request that you do it as soon as possible. Um, permitting is actually online today. So if you have any questions about your permit or about updating your permit, please ask them now because I believe we even have the manager online. OK, so the next section is changes in your NAICS code. As I mentioned earlier, oil and gas crude petroleum and natural gas extraction has changed. So if your NAICS code is currently 211111, I think that's five ones, then that needs to be updated. If you are a large company, please contact us and perhaps we can do this quickly for you if we change it all to one number to either the crude petroleum extraction or the natural gas extraction. 
So it looks like there's another question, TJ. What should we do if we have a facility with multiple AIs, but only one air permit? Do we need to send you a list to have them consolidated? Um, no. Yeah, Tasha, that's an odd scenario. Send me an email. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, the manager has stepped up. Um, thank you, Tasha. Uh, Tasha Burns at state.nm.us. It's in the chat box. TJ, if you could contact her and, um, okay, resolve. Chat box is great. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so from here on, we're just going through the steps of how to create a new submittal. Look to the greenhouse gas and just show it in the document quickly where it is. We put it down fairly at the bottom. This is really getting to be a long document. We think by the time it's done, it should be 100 pages. I'm joking. Um, maybe not. Anyway, so here's a quick blurb on who is supposed to be submitting. So if you, for a quick over overview, if you have to submit to EPA your greenhouse gas emissions to EPA, then you are required to submit to the Air Quality Bureau. However, we do encourage companies to report greenhouse gases to us through air, even if they're not reporting uh, to EPA. That would be really great. And we would be very grateful for any greenhouse gas information. But also keep in mind that it's not by facility. We've changed it from 2018 and 2019. We changed it so it's still an air, but it's kind of a separate branch. And this fall, this, the rest of the next couple of pages are uh, instructions on how to report your greenhouse gases. Oh, I just got some feedback. Um, so you can see it's really very simple and straightforward, and it's done by subpart. Okay. And I think I have said everything that I need to say on for this training, so I'm going to hand it over to Sean, and he will walk you through XML. Or fug fugitives. Great, thank you, Rosalind. Um, before we start our next part of the training, are there any outstanding questions? We do have a couple of things in the chat. Um, Tasha says removal of equipment that is in your permit and showing up in AER requires the permitting administrative multiform. And there is a link there to our permitting administrative multiform in case you need that. Um, and then Deanna says we received permit cancellation letters in 2019, but the AIs for GCP are still in AEIR. Do we need to have these removed from AEIR? Um, the answer to that one, Diana, is if they are showing up in AEIR and they should have been canceled, please use that request support button to let us know about that. Or um, if it's a long list, you could send Roslyn or Sean an email with the list of facilities. Um, and Laura wants to know if reporting thresholds have been determined yet. Rosalind or Sean, I'm not up to date on that. No, we haven't come up with um, real solid thresholds. Our system will accept um, numbers like 0 .001, 0 .01. Um, for VOCs, um, anything less than 0.5 seems uh, like you shouldn't need to do it. We're just trying to be reasonable. We have, that's going to take more research for us to do, but it, something like um, PAPS, benzene, and formaldehyde, smaller numbers, 0 0.001, 0 0.005. I've seen those numbers in the past from Title V. Our system will accept it, so if what 
you calculate, please enter it, and it will, uh, EPA accepts it, and our system will accept it too. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you for those questions. Um, so just to start off, if you guys have any more questions, be sure to ask them or type them in the chat, as Angela has said. And I am working in our testing environment today, so what I see is not necessarily the same thing as what you'll see in air production, but it should be very similar. The, you can tell that it's testing because there's a QA here and it's purple. You all should have a blue banner, a consistent blue banner across the top, the top of your screen in when you're submitting your emission inventories. <clears throat> so this is our emissions inventory page. And under the application, you should be approved for AIR. If you are not approved, then please register by following those instructions on how to access AEIR on our emissions inventory webpage. Once I click on this, I'll be brought to the AEIR application where there are multiple sections. The first section is news and information where we sometimes post updates on what is new to AIR. And in that section, you can also register for additional facilities where you can register for those roles that Rosalind was talking about, such as facility admin, submitter, and certifier. Below that is our facility emissions reporting section. In here, this is actually where your emission inventory submittals reside. So, and it's organized on a company to facility basis. So the company is indented first, and it's now a hyperlink where you can download a company-wide XML file. And below each company is the greenhouse gas emissions, as well as all of the facilities. And under each facility is our, the submissions for facility emission inventories. And I am a facility admin for each facility in New Mexico. So that's why my list is very long, but you should have a much shorter list. Um, and then at the very bottom, we have two other sections. The first one is create a new emissions inventory. And in this section, you can create a new emissions inventory for 2020 or any reporting year. Um, but for this reporting period, it'd be 2020. And you can also upload XML files in this section as well. In our, in our bottom section, which is new, um, as of Monday, you should be able to see the greenhouse gas reporting section. And this is how you create greenhouse gas reports. And we'll go over those quickly here. Um, and as Rosan said, I today I'll be showing an example of how to report an inactive facility during 2020 or a facility that, that had no emissions but has an active permit for any portion of 2020. So we identified a facility that did not have any equipment so that we could specifically show you how to report a, a, a facility without any emissions when there are no equipments, equipment available. So I am just going to enter this facility. And as you can see, this is a subject item list and there is no equipment. There are no subject items on here. The first line just shows you information about the facility itself. So it tells you the name of the facility, the designation. Normally in the designation, it tells you the type of facility it is. So this is an NOI or a notice of intent. And it gives you the AI number and that information is also available up here. All right, so in order to make this, let's assume that this company or this facility did not run during 2020 and therefore had no emissions. To fill out this, I would add one piece of equipment and we determined to standardize the process if you could add a fugitive and a fugitive is located under the category of release point and the type of fugitive and under designation um, just to standardize it you can call it fugitive and under description you can say plant fugitives for instance this is the same example as we have in our guidance document. And then for your construction date, um, it's not required, but if you could put in the, the date of your permit active or 
when your permit was activated. And then for source classification code, for fugitives, the source classification code would be this. So it's 310 and then 888 and 11. And again, this is also in our guidance documents. So you do not have to watch this video over again if you just want a quick reference. And for stacked information, you do not need to add a stack since we're going to zero at the missions anyway. So I'll click on save here. Usually, um, if there are emissions on a piece of equipment, you will need to have a stack for each piece of equipment. But in this case, since we're going to cancel out all the emissions, I will skip the stack. And as you can see, a new piece of equipment was added, or a new subject item was added today on December 16th, and it is a fugitive. Now, to show you how to zero out all your emissions, you would click on the radio button next to fugitives, click on the details form, and enter that. And under the first question in the general information tab, it asks if the equipment was active at any time during the year. Under that, select yes or no. In this case, we'll select no because we are trying to zero out all the emissions. If you select yes, you will have to input all of this other information as well. And then you can click on save, in which case it'll bring you to the next form, which is the emissions form. And right here in red, it says that since this item is currently marked as inactive for this year, no emissions information is required. And that is the case. So everything will be zeroed out or nulled out. And you can close this form. And as you can see, it is now marked as complete. And since we only need one, or we need all your equipment to be complete before submitting your emissions inventory, and since this one is complete and it's the only piece of equipment available, it is ready to be submitted. So you can just click on review for submittal and go through the certification process. We will have trainings on the certification process um, coming up in the next year. And we also plan on writing instructions for the certification process in our guidance document when it is available. And the one last thing before submitting your submittal is if you could write in the submittal comments here, something along the lines of the facility wasn't built or it isn't constructed or perhaps uh, you, you have a permit that's active but no emissions in which case you just didn't operate if you can write something along the lines of one of these comments before submitting your emissions inventory that would help us when reviewing. And there you go. So I will exit this and we can go over XML. Before we go over XML, does anybody have questions? I'm not seeing any questions in our chat box or any hands raised. So if you do have any questions, go ahead and raise your hand or put those in the chat box now. Yeah, perfect. And one other thing here is there is a request support from NMED button on each of these facility submittals for your emissions inventory. If there are any issues with your emissions inventory in general or your equipment list here, please click on that and you can submit questions to us on a facility level. And that's also how you would change NAICS code codes for individual facilities. Okay, Sean, I'm not still not seeing any questions, so go ahead. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, so I'm just reloading our homepage here. So as far as XML goes, let me just go here really quick. So I'll just show you an example facility. So to acquire an individual facility's XML, actually, let me get the top one since it's a better example. Okay, so for example, for Three Bear, to acquire an individual facility's XML, you would click on the hyperlink for an individual facility. So all of these ones that are indented in are individual facilities, while Three Bear Delaware is the company itself since it's indented to the left. So if I want to download an individual facility's XML, I would click on the hyperlink for that facility, and I would click on Get Current NMED 
this will be data file. It'll download the XML. However, if I want to download an, an entire company's XML file, which would download all of these facilities XMLs at the same time, I would click on the hyperlink for the company itself or the organization itself. And you will be brought to this page where you can download the organization XML file. Now we've encountered an issue where if you if you enter an emissions inventory submittal form before downloading your XMLs, the XML download will point to whatever submittal that you've entered before. So for example, since I entered that Devon facility, which was AI39079, when I click on the current facility XML file, it points to AI39079 when in actuality the AI number is 38067. So what we suggest is before doing any manual work and in any individual emissions inventory submittal form, download all of your XMLs beforehand so you don't run into an issue of working with the wrong XML. And if you do happen to download this XML on accident, always be sure that you're to check that you're working with the right XML. So to fix the issue, just log out of air and log back in and then download the XMLs. And at that, um, if there are no questions, does Eric want to present his tool for working with XMLs? I don't see any questions, so I'll go ahead and talk about XML. Um, don't know if we've talked about it before, but there's basically three ways to do inventory. You can do it directly through AEIR. You can download XML or download and upload XML files for one facility, or you can um, do a file for all facilities that uh, you are managing. So, the uh, we'll, we'll go over an example of a multiple facility XML and uh, so having just downloaded the XML file, you go to the emissions inventory main submittal page, click on the emissions inventory XML tools, which will download a zip file. Save that file. And then put it uh, somewhere where you can remember it. You're going to need to extract the file from the zip file because access works much better when it's extracted instead of when you try to run it inside the zip file. So inside this file, there are three files. There's a sample XML file. There's the XSD file which is the specifications of the XML file in particular. And then there's the access database file that will allow you to import, export, and connect the information to other sources. So we'll go ahead and double click the access file. And enable the content. So right now there shouldn't be any information in the file. So the there's two ways you can start out. You can well just to make sure that our we haven't been changing examples, we're going to go ahead and clear the tables. You shouldn't need to do this if you're downloading a fresh one, but for sake of argument, we're gonna we're gonna delete all the data and make sure that we have a, a fresh file. 
So the the quickest way to start out is to imp is to load the file that we just downloaded from AEIR. The other option would be to basically either enter the information or connect the tables to another database and run queries to extract that um, to set that data up. But uh, we figure out most people probably want to upload the files. That way they have a good starting point. That way they see what is in AEIR and they can just fill out the appropriate information. So we've loaded the file and there's three basic tables. Oh, I thought, thought we already did that. Oh, here. Um, sorry, I have not loaded the file yet. Okay. Um, I was going to ask, I do we want to use the example file in the? Um, yeah, in the it? example file looks, looked good when you were going through okay. it at the beginning because it has two different facilities. OK. And again, the example file is in the download itself. All right, feel free to take over. OK. We get our message that says the import has been completed. So there, the uh, the section that says data tables that need to be completed is self-explanatory. That is the information that needs to be completed. Um, click the open facility table, and that should show you the that'll show you what facilities are loaded, and the reporting year, which should be 2020. And then uh, feel free to enter any. Any comments? The uh, data is stored in XML, so apostrophes in this comment example are um, need special codes in order to put them in the file. But don't don't worry about that. That will work fine either as an apostrophe or as ampersand APOS semicolon. So as long as you're uploading files, you shouldn't need to add any facilities. Um, if you're starting from scratch here, you would need to enter the NMED ID and the reporting year. So this table we're pretty much done with. And it will ask you if you want to save the changes of a layout when you change the column widths. And I usually say no. It doesn't really matter, but if you sorted something or filtered something in some strange way, you would want to say no to make sure that it doesn't get filtered or sorted the strange way every time you open the table. Next, we'll go to the open equipment table button. This is where the majority of the information is, with the exception of the actual omissions. So each of these facilities has only one piece of equipment in our example. It's the first column is the agency interest ID. Then the status of the equipment is for whether you're adding equipment to the database or whether it already exists in the database, not whether you're you can't use this to add anything to the permit, but if your export did not have information in it, then you would need to use new. Now you wouldn't um, you wouldn't have the new as the status because it the system could only give you information about stuff it has. So so these would be existing if you in a normal scenario. Um, the equipment ID or the designation are required, e either one or the other. You, if you, um, you can use your own, if, if it's new equipment, you will only use the designation 
because the equipment ID is something that's assigned by our Tempo database. So here we have the designations of these equipment and then a whole bunch of fields that say new on them. New unit category, new unit type, new unit description. If you have existing equipment, then you won't need to fill out all the things that begin with new. But for adding new equipment, you'll need to get those filled out in some manner. The uh, I wanted to talk about the, the drop down menus for the new equipment. Let's see. So for example, um, yeah, new unit category. This drop down menu lists all the allowed options that can be used. And uh, for most types of equipment, equipment is the category. For for a few things, other other categories would be used. And those are listed in the guidance document. Now to possibly confuse everybody, but to let everyone who's any one who's trying to, connect, trying to connect this to another database, I'm going to show you the tables where these drop down menus are populated from. So on the navigation pane, click the two chevrons to expand the the table view. So go to the go to the left and down, further down. No. Right. Yeah, that. So all the tables that say ref something are the reference tables. So for example, if you double click ref new unit stack type. that shows the different types of stack types that are allowed in the XML spe specification. So if you're using the tables, you can just use the drop-down menu, but if you're trying to connect this to another database, then it can be useful to see what the, value, the, the values are already in tables. You don't need to decode the XSD file to figure out what they are. And that's about all I wanted to say about these reference tables. So let's close the reference table and, and hide the navigation panel. So we're back on the facility subject item table. And for new equipment, you need to fill out all the new fields. For existing equipment, you'll need to fill out the hours of operation and the materials consumed. So, I mean, basically you need to fill everything out, but those are the key things to fill out. Hours of operation per year and the uh, and whatever materials consumed or and the instructions for filling out fields here are the same as if you were going directly into AEIR same set of instructions just a different way to enter the data there's just multiple ways to do things and so this is so for operating hours per year, you would put the actual operating hours for that piece of equipment that year. And Eric, we do have two questions about oh. these. Um, the first is to point out that there's currently a typo in the material processed for crude oil. 
that we need to fix. It has an extra E and um, it causes issues when it is uploaded into AEIR. The uh, other is that um, under the ref pollutants in this tool, there isn't a total HAPS option. However, in the drop down menu in AEIR, total HAPS is listed as a pollutant. Do we need to include total HAPS in our emissions inventory? And that might be a Roslyn question, not an Eric question. So basically the items that are in the in those reference tables were copied from the XSD file. So that it looks like we might need to update the XSD file in order to in order to fix that issue. And I think I think total haps is still a thing that would be collected, but I'm not certain about that. Rosalyn or Sean, do you want to speak to the um, total haps? Um, as of this moment, it seems we need to double check. I I can't say right off the cuff right now. I need to double check that. All right. So it sounds like we'll get back to you on that one, Trent. Okay. So looks like we've Finish filling out this table. It shouldn't say 8760 hours. It should say whatever the actual number of hours that operated. So we're going to, well, it should say the, the, the number. <laughs> so we're going to say uh, 1400 hours for this piece of equipment, just for an example. And now we're done with this table theoretically. So we'll go ahead and close this table. When you say no, it's still gonna chain, save all of the data that was entered. It's just not gonna change the format. So you say no, and the 1400 that we just entered is still stored there. So now we'll open the emissions table. And uh, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Just like if you were doing it online, you enter the amount in tons per year. Now, the these can be filled out by copying and pasting columns from Excel or by connecting to other tables and running queries to fill these values. And also in the future, the, uh, the XML file can be uploaded into Calcatenate calculation tool. And then that will allow you to use other methods to calculate those emissions and it will place the values back into this table for sending to AEIR. And uh, we'll go ahead and close this table. So now we theoretically have all of our emissions filled out in these three tables. We want to export the file using the export file button. And that will put the file in the proper format to upload into AEIR. So give the file a name and a place.
and save the file. It will open the file in a program of your choice. Let's use Notepad. So as you can see, this is not this is readable, but not very readable. Basically, this just opened so you can see that you really did get a file exported. And uh, this is the format that AEIR will upload. Now, um, changes can be made in this file, but uh, to let's say you found an error from previously, you could change the, the hours in this file itself, but ideally you would change it somewhere else. However, let, yeah, let's go ahead and change it here and save it. And then we're going to upload this file back into the this uh, imp this access tool. So before we upload it, we're going to clear the tables. We're now. Now load that file that you just saved. And uh, open the equipment table. Scroll to the right till you find hours per year. And you see the 1400 from earlier is there and the 2550 that was just changed in the XML file. So just an example, you can, there's many ways to do things. It's probably easier to change the number in this access table than to change it in the XML file itself, because you could just change it very quickly here, export it again, and you're back in business. So that was all I was going to talk about for this part. The next part would be uploading the file into AEIR. Unless there's okay. any questions about this. I don't see any questions you want to take over for uploading, Sean? Sounds good. Um, thank you for that overview, Art. That was very helpful. Um, so since we just exported that XML file, I now have it in my documents folder, and I can upload it to AEIR itself. So if I go back to AEIR, near the bottom of the home page, there is a small section on XML data files and how to import them. So to upload an XML file, you can browse your computer, find the XML file that you want to upload. And it should the name should show up right here and you can click on this blue import into uh, into air. And once you select that, it'll say it'll give you a message saying that the you have not selected the reporting here, but it'll use the reporting year that's identified in the XML file, which should be 2020. So are you sure that you want to continue? The answer would be yes, because you do want to upload for 2020. So make sure that your, your reporting year in your XML is 2020, and that's correct. And what will happen at this point is it'll validate the XML against our schema, and it will then try to upload every the information to AEIR. And if there are any issues or any errors in the XML upload, it'll give you a description of what that error is in this box here. If there are no errors, 
then it'll say that the XML has been uploaded successfully and all is good. And as a warning of sorts, if you are trying to upload an XML file with many facilities, many different AI numbers at the same time, um, we suggest that you do some test batches before trying to upload all of them at the same time because you cannot rewrite an XML upload. So in order, if you mess up an XML upload and it does upload with errors, you have to delete all of the emission inventory submittals for all of the facilities in your file before you can re-upload your XML. So just do a spot check on a facility or two before trying to do your entire corporation or your entire organization. So here is the message that we just got from the XML upload. It says that it is valid against our scheme and it tells us some information. So the SEC code that we have in that file is not valid. So that equipment has been skipped. So, and it says that for the other piece of equipment as well for the other facility. So make sure that when you enter in any of your information that it's valid against our schema and that it's a valid code. So when you have invalid information, usually what happens is the equipment that has invalid information gets skipped in the XML upload. So right now, if I go into one of these facilities, so for example, 35497, the upload should be, the emissions inventory should be created for both of those facilities, but they should not have those new pieces of equipment that we just added in those facilities because they have been skipped. So, and that is because when I load the file, yeah, actually it should be already loaded in. So that's because right here under new unit SEC code, these codes right here are not valid. So make sure that when you're choosing a code, that the code is valid. And also all your other information is valid as well. And right now I'm just waiting for air to reload so I can go into those facilities and show you how they haven't been uploaded. But yeah, so sometimes you get errors like that. And if an error is strange to you or you don't know exactly how to fix an error, um, be sure to email Rosin or I and we can look into it so and see if there is an actual issue with our XML upload or with our actual XML schema or anything of that sort. While this is loading, is there any, are there any questions? Now would be the time if you have any questions, um, not necessarily just about XML, but if you have any questions about AEIR or the minor source emissions inventory in general, now would be a great time to put them in that chat box or raise your hand. But right now, Sean, we don't have any. Perfect. All right. Well, if anybody does have any questions at any point, like Angela just said, just let us know. So it looks like our page has reloaded. So I'm going to search using control find for this emissions inventory that was just created. So 2020 emissions inventory was just created by me on today. So I will to enter the emissions inventory, I'll click on the radio button and click on edit this emissions inventory. So when entering an emissions inventory, if it's already been created, this is how you enter it. However, if a 2020 submittal has not been created yet, you have to create the new submittal before you can re-enter it using this functionality right here. So since this one's already created, because we just uploaded the XML, I will enter it using the edit submittal button. And as you can see, there is no information here. At this point, I can add or I can add a new piece of equipment manually. However, if I were to fix that SEC code, I could just re-upload the XML and that equipment will show up on this page. But to re-upload the XML, I would have to delete the submission before I do that. And I know that we're over time, but I do want to go over 
greenhouse gas. I understand that you do have to leave and this is being recorded. So if you would like to see greenhouse gas information, but you don't have time to sit through it right now, we can send you the link to watch this demonstration. And we will also be going over greenhouse gas in the future. As Rosalyn said, there are going to be more trainings in January of next year. So I'm just trying to reload the homepage and I'm not sure if I already mentioned this, but it's just a little bit slow in the testing environment because there are so many facilities in our production environment, which is what you all will be using as industry. Air moves much faster. And just as a note, it skipped the piece of equipment that was uploaded via the XML, but it didn't skip the entire XML upload because as you can see, there are comments here. So if I, if we, in instance, uploaded, try to upload um, many pieces of equipment, if an individual piece of equipment has an error in it, such as the SCC one, that one will be skipped. But if the other ones are valid against our scheme, then those will be uploaded. All right, we do have a question. Um, Mike wants to know, once we submit by XML for numerous facilities, do we need to go into facility by facility to attach the supporting calculations? Yeah, so on for that particular question, um, you do have to go in facility by facility in the first place because you have to certify your each emissions inventory individually. So at that point, it would be the save time. It would be beneficial if you could just upload your calculations when you're certifying. And that would work. However, if there is a bunch of trouble with that if that causes a lot of issues um, we will accept a singular calculation file for multiple facilities as long as it's very well organized and it's readable and on the other facilities that is are included in that file you write comments on the, each individual admissions inventory saying that the calculations are uploaded on this other specific um, emissions inventory submission. Perfect. Okay, so it looks like our web, our homepage has been loaded again, and I will briefly go over this greenhouse gas section at the very bottom. So in this greenhouse gas section, greenhouse gases are required to be submitted by corporations that or organizations that are required to submit their information to the EPA, which I believe there is a 25,000 metric ton um, per year requirement. And if you meet that and you have to submit to the EPA, we would also require you to submit greenhouse gas information to us. However, we would appreciate any facility or any company that is willing to submit their greenhouse gas data to us anyways. So we will accept all data and we would appreciate any given data. So to start, this greenhouse gas submission. And it, a second point is that the greenhouse gas reporting is separate from an individual emissions inventory. So although you submit emissions inventory in, inventories for individual facilities underneath your company, a separate greenhouse gas middle is required for just the greenhouse gases. So if you submit your greenhouse gases via, or when you submit your greenhouse gases via this separate tool, don't submit greenhouse gas data via your facility. We don't want double reported emissions. So to use this tool, or to use this function, um, you can click on this drop down menu to see a list of facilities and you can select your facility. You can also type in the name of, I mean, you can select your company. You can also type in the name of your company into this drop down box right here. But for right for today, I will just select one. So I'll select Chevron right here. And I'll give it a moment to load and the reporting year will be 2020. Then I will click on this create new greenhouse gas annual reporting year submittal to get into the company level submittal for Chevron.
And on this page, we require or greenhouse gas emissions to be reported by subpart. And this drop down list right here tells you or gives you an option of many different subparts to choose from. And these are subparts from the EPA. So common subparts for oil and gas would be, for instance, subpart C, which is general stationary fuel combustion sources. Um, and there's another one, subpart W is petroleum and natural gas systems. Um, subpart UU is injection of carbon dioxide, and there are many more. So for this one, I'll select subpart C, and you can put in the emissions of carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. These are the only three greenhouse gases that we require. So you can type in your emissions here for each of these individual gases. And since many um, companies will submit multiple subparts to the EPA, we also have options to have multiple subparts here. So I can add new subparts by clicking on this blue add new subpart button. So I can click on W as well, for instance, right here, and I can input information as well. Enter that. And we do have another question. Um, Ian wants yes. to know if we can upload bulk greenhouse gas reports using XML. So at this time, we don't have XML functionality for our greenhouse gases because we feel that um, since it's reported on the company level and since there are so few gases, most or, or most people only have to deal with one, two, three facility or companies in general. So if you could just upload this information on a company wide level, you shouldn't need to input or you shouldn't need to use XML for it because it should be a fast process or once your calculations are complete, it should be easy to input into AIR itself. And uh, I can just add one more step right here, just as an example. And I just will put some information here as well. Um, there are also comments available on our greenhouse gas emissions and a place to attach your calculations. And just on the bottom here, there's a save button. There's a button to submit for certification. There's another request button and there's a cancel button if you've made a mistake. So for this, I will just click on save to show you what the home page looks like after creating this greenhouse gas submission. Oh, and I forgot there's also the option to remove subparts in case you uh, added one too many or some too many. Okay, great. So the home page has been loaded again. So I can control find for Chevron, which is the one that we just created. Right here, Chevron USA. Okay, so under Chevron USA, you can see that there's a new 2020 greenhouse gas middle in process created by me on today. And to re-answer it, you would click on this radio button and click on that yellow submittal button at the bottom of the page. And as you can see, it's separate from any individual facilities emissions inventory. So this is a company-wide or an organization-wide emissions inventory for greenhouse gases specifically. And I think that covers most of greenhouse gas. Are there any specific questions about greenhouse gas or XML, anything else that we covered today, or just the emissions inventory in general?
No, I think that's good, Sean. Thank you. And thank you, Eric. I hope that answers everybody's question. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to email Sean or I and Eric. And um, look for the schedule and a bulletin for January uh, and also on our webpage. Angela, you want to wrap her up? Sure thing. As Laura Nelson said, if you have any additional questions, um, feel free to get in touch. Also, if you have any um, suggestions for trainings that you would like to see or topics you are confused about uh, concerning emissions inventory, we would be happy to hear about those. Have uh, I hope everyone has wonderful, happy holidays and a little bit of time off over the next couple weeks. And we will see you in January. And with that, we'll, we'll wrap up this call. Thanks so much for attending. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.